Uh, well, the sudden death of three people from suspected mushroom poisoning in Victoria has put the spotlight on just how dangerous the plant can be. Let's bring in today medical expert Dr Nick Coatesworth. Doc, thanks for your time. How dangerous can these mushrooms be? What do they actually do to us? Sarah, you know I'm not one for over-exaggeration. These are seriously dangerous things. The Amanita phylloides mushroom, otherwise known as the death cap, probably has a mortality rate of between 20 and 50 per cent. Wow. You can consume as little as half a mushroom and have enough to get a lethal dose for a human. And what it does is it shuts down your liver. And of course, three tragic deaths and one person waiting for a liver transplant in Victoria. I guess the, the biggest thing here is um, that you don't know what you're going to be consuming unless you're an expert in the mm. field, have some knowledge of it. Um, so the worry is that kids go out um, into a, a park or into the bush mm. and find one of these things and consume it. What are some of the symptoms um, that, that people present with? Yeah, so Carl, it's, it's abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, diarrhoea, and one of the real problems is that those symptoms subside, onset in about six hours, subside in about 24. You think you're okay, mm. but your liver's actually failing. And of course, kids which have a lower body, a lower body weight than adults require a, a, a lower dose. So I think the public health message is absolutely clear here. Do not collect and eat wild mushrooms. It's a big problem down here in Canberra. We have public health campaigns every year, mm. just don't do it. Mm. That's the thing, though, look, what you mentioned there I find quite interesting is, is you don't actually know what you might be suffering from. I mean, these three people thought they had gastro, for example, when they presented to hospital. I mean, what chance of survival do you have if you don't even know what you've consumed that's caused your illness? Oh, it's pretty grim, Sarah. I mean, your liver's sort of progressively failing there to a point where you need a transplant, and if you don't get one, you're, you're going to die. So I think that you, you know, the, the the link is the mushrooms. If you've had mushrooms and, and you, you, they're wild mushrooms and you get any symptoms, mm. uh, then you should present to a doctor immediately. In fact, there's, there's some uh, suggestion that if you eat any wild mushroom, whether you have symptoms or not, you should take the mushroom and get it checked out. And it is, it's not just experts in the field, it's literally having a look at that mushroom in the laboratory to determine whether yeah. it is a death cap or not. Yeah. That's how hard it is to know. Yeah, look, wow. They're incredibly important to um, the ecosystem mm. mushrooms. I just watched this terrific documentary called Fantastic Fungi mm. um, on, on Netflix if you want to learn it's about it. It's a good it. one. Yeah, it's really, really interesting. Um, they're so important. Um, we'll get on to that at another time, perhaps. I'll <laughs> give my review of it. But uh, good on you, Doctor. A good timely warning for everyone out there. Mm, Thank absolutely. you. Titan the Victorian community has been rocked to its core this week after three residents died from suspected mushroom poisoning. A fourth person, Reverend Ian Wilkinson, is right now fighting for life in hospital. Fran Grimes is an Anglican minister who worked closely with Reverend Wilkinson and she joins us now. Uh, good morning to you. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, I think the whole nation is talking about this story. They're grappling with it. They're, they want to know what happened. How are you dealing with it inside your community? Oh, um, it's been, it's rattled us too. It's rattled us a lot. And a lot of people describe their feeling as numb and disbelieving as it was um, playing out. And uh, then, I th yeah, it's, and it seems that's how people are feeling. They just can't believe that it's actually happened. What, what do they say to you and how do you console them? I, well, a lot of people uh, tell me how well they knew Heather and Don and Gail as part of the community and, and um, a great love for Ian too. Uh, people here have um, been involved in the high school with uh, Don and Gail and mm. Heather and their children have um, been at school together. They've played tennis together um, with Heather and, uh, yeah, they, and to console them, um, not easy, but I think one of the big things that we have as um, Christians is that they really, we know that they rest with God mm. and they were very faithful and kind, loving people that were walking with God and they'll continue to. Yeah. Um, Fran, do you have, um, and this is difficult too, any updates on Ian's condition at all? I'm sure people are asking every day. Yeah, they are and we don't have much. We know as much as probably the rest of um, Australia that he is in a critical condition but stable um, and, as far as we know, waiting for a liver transplant. Um, how do you deal, again, there's nothing easy about this story, but how do you deal with the many questions that are unanswered at the moment and people wanting to know what happened? How are you dealing with all that uncertainty? Well, I think the main thing is, well, first of all, it started as a story of food poisoning and then it moved on to mushroom poisoning and people found that... Um, it's hard to believe that that can happen. Uh, but actually, we haven't had a lot of the questions here in the community about 
you know, you know, how and who and all those things. I think they're really running their course in the media, mm. but here it's just a terrible tragedy that is here. And um, I, I think there's a lot of just wanting to love and care and support, and even those community members who are caught up in the police investigations, we just want to um, support them. So at this stage, um, not knowing mm. isn't easy, but the worst part about it is that it has actually happened. I think inside any any small community, any community for that matter, when you have grief on this level, um, all those questions yes. and those things circling around the outside of it too can only add to the weight on that community mm. and their families who are, who are dealing with the death of a loved one. Um, there are big questions yes. still to be answered and I'm sure those questions are going to continue to be, to be asked uh, outside and inside. What do you say to people while they're waiting for answers? I, that we don't know. <laughs> I think that's probably the, the main thing. It could have been a terrible mistake. Um, so at this stage we don't know, um, but that uh, I think a big part about it is, and everyone is being incredibly cautious of uh, yeah. mushrooms, I suppose, in particular. And, uh, but uh, yeah, I think, you know, we're really saying, um, it, She's just getting along people in their grief. You lead, people in their grief. You lead um, your own um, little community there. How, how are you holding up and dealing with all of that? Um, f I guess the immediate thing was everyone said, what can we do? And what we did do last Thursday was get together, open the church up and pray together. And we did the same thing on Saturday morning. Uh, Sunday morning was very much um, a community of faith meeting and asking God to help us in all of this. And uh, so it's really getting alongside people. Uh, in fact, talking about the world can be a dark place and that Jesus can bring light into the darkness. Um, and also as Christians, there's a verse in the Bible that says, we do not grieve as those who have no hope. So on that level, we look to God to help us, and that's um, um, helping people to get alongside, knowing he will help us. Fran, you have a lovely, gentle way about you. Um, thank you so much for being with us today, and all the very best. A small Victorian community in South Gippsland remains in disbelief this morning after three people died and another fights for life after suspected mushroom poisoning. Isabella Sashkovsky is outside the Austin Hospital this morning. Is it the Cook's ex-husband has previously been struck down with a gut illness? Sarah, good morning. That's certainly right. Simon Patterson says that he almost died and was put into a coma battling a mysterious gut illness just last year. In a lengthy post to social media, he has described what occurred, saying, I collapsed at home, then was in an induced coma for 16 days, through which I had three emergency operations, mainly on my small intestine. It is worth noting that at this point, it doesn't appear that his hospitalisation is part of this current homicide investigation that is very much focused on his ex-wife, Erin. We do know, of course, that she cooked that deadly mushroom meal, which ultimately did kill his parents, Don and Gail, as well as his auntie, Heather Wilkinson, whose husband this morning is still here at the Austin Hospital. Reverend Ian Wilkinson fighting for life, waiting for a liver transplant, his family by his bedside. This morning, we have heard from Currumburra Anglican Minister Fran Grimes. She's worked closely with Ian. She says that that in those small communities, there is just a sense of tragedy. It's been, it's rattled us too. It's rattled us a lot. And a lot of people describe their feeling as numb and disbelieving as it was um, playing out. And uh, then, I th yeah, it's, and it seems that's how people are feeling. They just can't believe that it's actually happened. Sarah, there are concerns that Erin has gone into hiding. She has been seen in Lee and Gatha with a suitcase. Meanwhile, police will today focus on a dehydrator that was found at a local tip. It has been sent for forensic testing. All right, Isa, thank you. Hey there today, fans. Sarah and... <laughs> What's my name again? Oh my goodness, Carl. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching our <laughs> YouTube channel, though. Subscribe now for more news, special reports and amazing Aussie stories. And Carl misbehaving, Whoa, of course. That never happens. Always happens. What's she talking about?